You'll need three sheets of foam core boards. Working on the ribbed side to conceal your guidelines, draw a window on your first board that leaves a two inch border at the top and sides. Use an X-Acto knife to carefully cut out the window. Set this board aside. Take your second board and cut five three inch wide strips. Leave two of the strips uncut for the long sides of the sign, then trim the remaining three strips to the width of the short sides. Trim them a little bit shorter than the width so that they fit snugly between the longer strips when you attach them. Set one of these shorter strips aside. Place the third board ribbed side up and use a hot glue gun to attach the two long strips and two of the short strips. You can use masking tape to help keep the strips in place as you glue them. Set aside to dry. Lay a row of floral foam blocks along the width of your sign, then glue them just below the window's bottom edge. Take your 3 inch short strip and glue it to the bottom of the foam blocks. Cut four small cardboard squares and glue them to the bottom strip to add more support to the foam blocks. Flip the window over and use your hot glue gun to attach it to the bottom of the sign. Now it's time to add your faux florals. Carefully insert the stems into your foam blocks, tuck in sheet moss at the bottom for a finished look. Finish with a sign using a Cricut paint, stencil, or marker, and place in your entry to welcome your guests in the new season. When it starts to feel like fall, I immediately run to Dollar Tree and grab eight coils of nautical rope. I also pick up two of their pumpkin wreath forms to make this amazing project. I start by adding some hot glue to the wreath form and begin to tightly wrap the rope around each spoke of the pumpkin. I continue doing this for all of the vertical sections. I save the outside sections for later. I quickly realize that needing to start a new rope in the middle of a section looks messy. So for the rest, I just cut each rope in half and use each length to wrap the entire spoke so that doesn't happen again. I do the same for the other pumpkin. Now I'm cutting off the excess rope. Then I use some thin floral wire to attach both wreath forms together. They aren't a mirror image of one another, but that's okay. I have an idea to fix the lopsided stem later. Using more hot glue, I start from the bottom and wrap the now connected edges with my rope. I'm not too worried about the bottom being messy. Once I have the entire outside of the now three-dimensional pumpkin wrapped, I grab some thinner white cotton rope and wrap it around the wonky stem. I'm adding the hot glue on top of the rope so that it stacks on itself rather than attaching it directly to the wire. I also taper the rope as I go up the stem so that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. Next, I place the wrapped pumpkin into a shallow basket. When I think of early fall, I always picture my big, beautiful hydrangeas that turn a gorgeous shade of pinkish burgundy when it starts to get chilly. So I clip a few of these and I head back inside. Finally, I just tuck my hydrangeas into the gaps in the finished pumpkin to lay in the basket. The best thing about these hydrangeas is that they'll dry perfectly in this arrangement, so I won't need to worry about watering them. I hope this inspired you to bring a little bit of fall into your home this week. Head to the home section of your favorite big box store and grab a tension rod that is one inch in diameter. Buy some bunches of faux fall flowers and leaves. Lay a pool noodle flat on a table and draw a straight line across the top of the noodle with a marker. Then take a sharp pair of scissors and cut a slit through the entire top side of the pool noodle. Then take your tension rod and push it through the sliced cut and into the center of the noodle. Take your faux floral stems in your favorite autumnal colors and cut the stems to about one inch below the bloom. Starting with your larger flowers, simply poke the stems of the blooms into the pool noodle. They will stay secure and no glue should be needed. Add additional larger sized blooms as well as plant foliage that you can tuck beside or under a flower. Once you get the larger flowers set, start to fill in with smaller blooms as well as wandering flowers. You can add other items to your floral tension rod. Poke small pumpkins with wire into the pool noodle. Take it all a step further and twist some floral wire around pieces of ribbon and then poke the wire into the pool noodle. This is a great way to hide sparse areas on the pool noodle. Follow the instructions for your tension rod and adjust the length to fit between two cabinets in the kitchen above your sink. Your tension rod garland is a perfect way to decorate for the fall season. To add something fun to my fall tree, I've gone ahead and collected a whole bunch of these fun pom-poms in fall colors. 
and I want to attach them each to a little piece of wire. So I've just taken some floral wire and cut it into little lengths. These are just a couple inches long. And I'm going to go ahead and find the center of my pom pom and put a little dab of glue in there. Once I've got that little dab of glue, I'm just going to poke the end of the wire right into the middle of the pom pom and close it up. Once that glue dries, it's going to be nice and hard, and that pom pom will be on the end of the wire like this. Then I can go ahead and wrap these around the branches of my fall tree. And you can see I've got a bunch made here. I'm going to take this um, really cute sunflower garland made out of felt that I have. I picked this up at Michael's one time, and I absolutely love these giant sunflowers. I think they look so cute. I'm going to loop it back here, and I'll just use that loop on one of the branches. And then I'm going to start bringing my sunflowers right around the tree. And these big ones are just so cute on this tree, and they're going to look good for fall. And I'm just going to take this and to begin with, I'm just going to keep twisting it around the tree and then I'll worry about placing it and arranging it once I get it around the tree. And when you get back to wherever you're going to end, when it's on a garland like this, you can again you just use that loop like this to loop it around a branch and that will keep it in place. Now that the first garland is in place, I'm going to go ahead and add a second one and just keep going around the tree. My tree already had lights on it as well, so I didn't have to put lights on it. But if you were doing this at home, you could absolutely um, add some lights before you put your garland on. With the sunflower garland all over the tree now, it's time to add those super fun pom-poms that we made at the beginning. Now, because we put them on the wire, they're really easy to attach. So you can just decide where you want your pom-pom, and then you can just twist the wire right around that tree branch to hold it into place. We thought these pom-poms would be so cute mixed in with the little sunflowers. The last thing I want to do to finish off my tree is make a little bow for the top. And I'm going to use this burlap ribbon. I want it to be really rustic and fall-like. So I'm just going to fold this over a few times, gathering it in the middle here. And then I'll just gather up the middle. and fluff it out a little bit and I'll attach that with a piece of floral wire right in the middle. My bow is all tied and ready to go on the top of my tree so I'm just going to use that same piece of floral wire to wrap it around the top of the tree like this. We're ready to go. I'll finish adding a few little pom-poms and I'll show you what my tree looks like. I hope this has inspired you to pull out your tree early and decorate it for fall. You just can't go wrong with big sunflowers at this time of year. And with a few pom-poms thrown in, it's a great way to use your tree at a different time of year. I'll see you next time.